csxm.com forward slash marine webinars. And if you have specific questions uh, at a later date, um, you can email marine.support at SiriusXM.com, uh, and we will include that in that, this WebEx. For anybody who is joining the WebEx, um, we will include that Marine Support email address here on several occasions. So, um, all right. So, we want to show everybody how to use the chat feature because that's how we're going to interact with you. Everybody on the call is currently muted and will remain muted. Uh, so we don't get distracted with background beeps and noises and, and just little distractions. So, Dan, if you could go to the chat screen. If you look at this bubble right here, and Dan, if you could point to that little bubble, that's what enables your chat right there on the, on the middle of your screen. And then you want to take and go over to the chat feature section and click down to click on everyone, and then you start composing your message. So in the next, um, <clears throat> how we're going to divide this is we're going to do, we're going to divide this webinar into two sections. The first section is going to be a series of screenshots that kind of take you through the, the Raymarine user interface for SiriusXM Weather. And what we ask you to do as we're going through those screenshots is chat us your questions. And then what we'll do at the end of that section, we'll pause. We'll take the questions that are relevant, that are, uh, you know, most general, and then we'll answer those, and then we'll proceed through the uh, entire rest of the WebEx, and we'll have another um, question at the end. So, if you wouldn't mind, just chat us your questions in that chat feature section, and we'll get to them at the beginning of the section and then at the end of the webinar. Um, we will also, I uh, just want to let you guys know, we did not let you know this previously, that three people on this call, on this WebEx, will uh, be lucky winners of $50 gift cards that you can apply to SiriusXM Weather or SiriusXM Radio. So we're going to pick three people that are attending this WebEx tonight at random, and um, we will uh, notify you via email in the next week. Uh, that you have won. So we've already awarded our winners for our previous WebEx sessions. This is our uh, third webinar that we're delivering in the last couple of weeks uh, and more to come. So, um, so as an overview, this should be about 45 minutes um, and uh, including, you know, this should include some questions as well. So we may run a little bit over beyond the 45 minutes, but expect about 45 minutes of time. Uh, and please, when you're chatting us, make sure that you do click everyone so that everybody sees your questions. And when you're posting questions, if you would just be conscious of what you're posting uh, to make them as broad or as general as possible. If it's a specific question about your service or your chart plotter, um, we will not be able to answer those. We'll do our best to answer as many general questions as possible. And I think also what will happen if you uh, ask general questions, it'll spur other questions and some thoughts from everybody else. Okay. All right. So, uh, without further ado, um, my name is Jeff Leach, and I'm co-presenting with Dan Dickerson. Dan and I are both out of the Washington, D.C. office and work for SiriusXM Marine. We're also really pleased to have C.A. Richardson, who is the host of Flatscast TV and the uh, Ray Marine ambassador on board this call for uh, little specific uh, uses of Ray Marine and how he uses the service aboard CAs on the water uh, incessantly uh, on a daily basis and uh, relies on his Sirius XM weather over his Ray Marine plotter. And so we get to hear from him a bit about how he specifically uses the service as we go through some of these slides. So uh, thanks again for joining. We have a great, uh, a great gathering of people from all across the United States. And I'd like to say, too, that we have a great gathering of people across different kinds of boats. So we're all boaters, and I'm glad that multiple people, whether you're into fishing or whether you're into cruising or whether you're into sailing um, <clears throat> or uh, whether you've got a boat uh, that's coming soon, uh, we appreciate everybody joining and, and glad everybody could uh, take the time this evening to be a part of this. So we'll do our best to uh, share more for those current SiriusXM subscribers about what the service offers and also for those potentially soon-to-be subscribers, uh, a little bit more detail about what you can expect if you do subscribe to SiriusXM Weather. I will say at the, um, at the beginning here that this is what we consider our 101 level, level uh, SiriusXM Weather course. Um, we are going to go through the basics of our most common or most popular features 
We're not going to cover everything and we're not going to go into really great detail just to conserve time. Um, if folks are interested, we will send you a follow up survey after this webinar and you're interested in learning to uh, understand more about SiriusXM weather, we may just offer a 200 level course, uh, you know, in the upcoming, uh, uh, upcoming months for those that are interested. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Dan, if you'd roll to the next slide. <clears throat> All right, so what sets SiriusXM marine weather apart? What are our value points? This is up-to-date graphical weather information and forecasts that are viewed directly on your multifunction display, directly on your chart plotter, at your home, in front of your face, um, not over a cell phone, not over a tablet. It's uh, right where your nav charts are, and you see graphical weather displayed right on the screen in front of you. We offer complete coverage, so this is a satellite service. It's not based on Wi-Fi or cellular networks. Um, so in my particular case and Dan's particular case here on the Chesapeake, I know where my boat is at the end of the dock. I get about a bar and a half of two or two bars of cell signal on my Verizon network, and that is not enough to animate weather on my weather apps. I have a whole plethora of weather apps on my phone. Uh, but not good enough, even here in the Chesapeake. Um, and, and I know a lot of people on this call are going offshore. And for those that have been offshore, I know you can attest to the fact that, you know, somewhere beyond four to six miles off, you start rapidly losing cell signal. Um, so this is a perfect uh, service for that. And we will talk about the coverage area in a few more slides. And then last but not least, a value point of ours that we have not done the best job communicating, but we want to do a better job at, is that our, we have a seasonal suspend program. We know there's a lot of uh, SiriusXM current subscribers, weather subscribers, that live in the northern latitudes or that pull their boats for various reasons. Maybe your boat's up on the hard because you're painting the bottom or getting some work done. And there's absolutely no point in paying for a subscription-based service if you're up on the hard or you're not using your boat. So, Seasonal Suspend allows you to turn off the service for up to six months. You simply call in and you let us know when you want the signal to be react to uh, be sent to your, your chart plotter, to your weather receiver, and wake it back up. And that can go on for up to six months. There is no fee while you're lying dormant. And there, better yet, there's no active reactivation fee when the signal goes back out um, anytime up to that six months. Um, if you do end up just canceling or deactivating the service, you will get a reactivation fee when you sign back up. So, if you're only seasonally suspending under six, uh, if you're only suspending for under six months, seasonal suspend is the way to go. All right, Dan, next slide. <clears throat> Probably our most commonly used and popular feature is weather radar and lightning. Uh, this screen is probably very familiar to most of you because you see very similar screens. Um, on your weather apps or watching TV. And so we're looking at here, and um, Dan, if you could use the pointer to point out where the boat is. We're looking at a storm system working its way through the Gulf, and we see various levels of intensity in the storm. There's no real red in here. There's a little bit of orange. So obviously, that's a little bit more intense cell that's coming through the system here. Uh, and then you also see some lightning strikes which will show you exactly where the lightning is in relation to your boat. Why we like to include the boat in this particular diagram is this is the way you would see it on your screen, on your chart plotter, on your display. And in many cases, especially where these storm cells are not as dense, you have the option of running through or around storm cells in a way to stay safer or to get home or just to avoid the thickest, densest part of storms. Something that SiriusXM Weather also offers on this feature, on the weather radar feature, uh, is an animation uh, feature. So you can actually see the animation of the weather as it comes across through time coming across your screen. Anything I missed there, Dan? Um, there's one other little thing. On this diagram, you'll see that the lightning bolts are actually different colors. Um, we identify lightning strikes that have occurred within the last 10 minutes. So if it's a bright yellow bolt, it's one that just happened. If it's an older black bolt, like you see up here, that's one that's probably 10 minutes away, and after 10 minutes, it's going to drop off screen and not show anymore. So it's giving you, you can see right here, this is where the most active part of the storm is because we still have bright yellow hits going on. And over here, this is where it's starting to fade off a little bit. 
Yeah, good point, Dan. And uh, CA, anything to uh, to include here about how you use SiriusXM weather radar and lightning? Well, it, it, it's a safety issue for both myself and my clients. And being in a small boat, I try to avoid the zones with lightning. And if everyone's really well informed on the boat, it's a lot easier to make a uh, a conservative decision when necessary to run back to either the marina or I can poke through one of those holes. When you do the animation, you actually can see uh, if there's like a bow echo, uh, echo, if you will, if it's more of a comma shape and you can tell that the winds are going to be a lot stronger in those storms. So I try to circumvent those issues and not put myself in harm's way or the people that I'm responsible for. It's a good Great. point, CA. We're, we're going to have to um, we're going to have to work with you on that bow echo that you talk about. I think that's a that's something that only somebody who's watched this a lot starts to recognize. And and we'll we'll see if we can't get that onto onto a how-to video or something because I I think that's a very relevant point and I appreciate you making it. No no problem. It's it's a it's a point well taken when you're in an 18 foot tarpon skiff. <laughs> For sure. Well, I would uh, I would also say on this slide as a recommendation for everybody who's uh, joining us tonight is what we recommend and what we often hear, especially for offshore anglers and cruisers, uh, is zooming out. So getting a sense of situational awareness of your surroundings and a broader uh, perspective. So you can see down at the bottom of the screen, Dan, if you use the pointer, it says this is a 25 nautical mile zoom area. Uh, if you zoomed out to, let's say, 100 or 200 miles, you get a much broader perspective of what's going on with radar around you. And then, of course, as CA mentioned, you can zoom in and see the specific storm cells as they surround you. All right, Dan, next slide. Okay, so here we're going to talk a little bit about uh, wind and wave conditions, which is probably one of the most uh, secondly most popular features that we have. And what we're looking at is a screen that gives us several pieces of information at one time. Uh, the first one being wind, speed, and direction. And uh, with the Raymarine, you have two choices of symbols. You can have it show up as an arrow or as a wind barb. Uh, I typically tend to prefer to use the wind barb because it gives me speed and direction at the same time very easily. Um, and also because of the, you're seeing the wind barb on screen and you're also seeing an arrow on screen right now, the arrow in this case is the wave direction. So instead of seeing two sets of arrows and trying to figure out which one is which, um, uh, again, I prefer to have a wind barb and use the arrow for just the wave information. So a little bit more about the wind barb. Uh, here's an example of one right here. It looks sort of like the letter F sometimes, or maybe a backwards looking L. Basically, the little dot at the beginning of the shaft is, is the fixed point, and the long part of this symbol, the long shaft that extends from one end to the other, denotes the direction of the wind. So from this symbol right here, the wind is coming from over here and headed down towards this. So basically, the wind right now is out of about the, we'll say the east northeast is where it's coming from. If you were facing east, northeast, the wind would be in your face. And on this barb, it's at 15 knots. And I apologize, the, uh, the screen is a little hard to see. I'll blow this up a little bit. You can see it a little bit better. So this is denoting 15 knots. This one is denoting 15 knots because on the end of this symbol, there are two tick marks. There's a long one and a short one. Kind of looks like the letter F. The long one denotes 10 knots, the short one denotes 5 knots. Over here we have a 10 knot symbol. So this one is only running at 10 knots. And we can see the wind has shifted a little here, probably because, because of the land mass. It's caused the wind to shift a little bit. The wind is more out of the uh, uh, north-northeast as opposed to the east-northeast like it is here. So we can see the wind is coming from this direction, headed down to this direction, looking at this barb. If we look over here, we've got wind at 20 knots. There are two of the longer tick marks on the end. So again, base here, wind coming from this direction at 20 knots headed this way. We can also see the arrow, that would be your wave direction. So the waves are also coming the same direction as the wind. And over here, they're opposing a little bit. So it's gonna be a little bit more 
choppy out there where you've got opposing forces. And we'll uh, change my zoom level just back here a little bit, get the boat back on screen. You can see right now the boat is basically headed into the wind. So the next thing that we're looking at here is the, the uh, color of the water. That color is representing the wave height. And that's a setting, again, on the Raymarine. Um, there's a, uh, a menu function you bring up called Display Graphics. And that's where you turn on and off each of these individual weather elements that you want to see overlaid. You have your choice of overlaying almost everything all at the same time. There are a few exceptions. In this case, I have wave height turned on. So uh, in your Raymarine manual, there is a uh, area that tells you what these colors mean. Uh, basically, dark blue is wave's height of one foot or less. Uh, this green would be five to six, so you can see th where the different wave heights are changing. Over here, uh, the uh, it's probably four to five, so that it goes from dark blue to light blue to green to yellow to red. Um, red being, you know, you probably don't want to be there. So that's your wave height in indication. Uh, this color palette could also be changed to show wave period instead. So when you're listening for wave information, if you want to know how far apart, if the, if the waves are at four second intervals or at 10 second intervals, um, you can change that screen to see that instead. But you can't look at both wave period and wave height at the same time. However, you can click anywhere on screen and it will give, bring up a, a text page. And we'll look at that one in a couple uh, slides from now. So that's the, uh, the uh, wind and wave information. Uh, CA, you have any, any, any commentary you'd like to add to that? Well, what I use it for uh, as a nearshore captain and in, uh, intercoastal um, and backcountry captain is I, if I know what the wind direction is, I know if I'm going to be fighting what we call confused sea, where the tide, where you displayed over there along the Cape, is, is bucking the wind, which creates very uncomfortable conditions in a small boat. So I pay attention to that. And oftentimes, you know, whether you're riding the storm out or riding that rough water out a little bit, if you're patient enough and you can time the tide right, then you can get the tide and the wind in the same direction. And that lays those seas down quite a bit. And understanding the strength and the direction of the wind and where the tide is uh, relative to uh, middle third, upper third, or dead slack, you'll, you can make a good sound decision on when you should be running back to port or when you should be just making a run um, to safety. Okay. Jeff, anything? All right. Moving nope, on. I think you got it. Thanks. So now one of our uh, favorite things we like to talk about um, is sea surface temperature. So now what we're looking at on this screen is we've turned the wave height information off and we've turned sea surface temperature on. So it's showing up as a color palette on screen. And again, there's a um, section in the manual that will tell you what these colors mean, but it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. And you can click on screen anywhere and get the temperature at that exact location, wherever you put wherever you put the uh, the cursor on screen, there's a way it'll pop up and give you the temperature at that exact location. But the beauty here is being able to see a temp break. So this was a picture that was just taken a few days ago, and we're this is the mouth of the Chesapeake Bay, and right here we can see the Gulf Stream. So I've got 80 degree water approximately. 70 to 80 degree water right here and I've got you know 40 to 50 degree water over here and we can see right where the break is that break is where we want to go after our pelagic fish that's where the water is, is stirred up a little bit due to the change in com temperature that's where the the bait fish are going to be and that's where the pelagics are going to be to come after them so if we're headed out for tuna or mahi or something like that we're looking for those temp breaks Jeff, CA, yeah, tell us about uh, well, well, and cruising. 
to, in, in my opinion, those are those are edges that that anglers would fish uh, with relative confidence that they're going to locate fish, just like a visible edge. If you were fishing structure or if you were fishing a coastline or anything like that, a bar, a mangrove shoreline, inshore, those are obvious clues where fish are going to be held up, and it, it definitely takes the guesswork out of where you should be fishing. Even when you look up in Chesapeake Bay and you see the green color where the water is a little warmer and you see the cooler spots in there, depending on the season, you may be fishing those cooler spots. Maybe that's where the fish are more, most comfortable, or maybe you're going to locate the bait where you have a little bit of those yellow zones within the green uh, where the bait's going to be a lot more comfortable. So the, the temperature information is, 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 is a valid reason uh, for anglers to want to have this feature. Okay. Yes, yeah, so um, that's a good one, uh, Dan. Also about um, just the Gulf Stream in general. Uh, right. Can you cover the, it, yeah, as I said, the, this was picture was taken just a few days ago. This is the Gulf Stream right here. So that's a, a, a basically a northerly current. Now up here in the Chesapeake might not mean as much as crucial, but for those of you based out of Florida, especially if you're crossing over the Bahamas certain times of the year. It's very nice to know where that current is. You know, it's not so much for fishing, but just cruising purposes. If you're on a slow-moving boat, you're going to be affected by that current trying to cross over to the Bahamas. It's nice to be able to see. And 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 again, here it is right here. You can see that ribbon. That's what that's what's creating that warm right warmth in this shot is the Gulf Stream. So um, uh, I'm going to interrupt here for just a minute. Um, uh, a question popped up about uh, whether these charts can be overlaid on Navionics. And the uh, question is, is yes, with Ray, Ray Marine, um, whichever chart is displayed, this goes over top of whichever one you pick, whichever one you choose to show on your screen, the weather will overlay. So moving on to the next piece of information that, uh, that is very popular in our stream is, is buoy and weather station information. Now, in the waterways, there are several NOAA buoys that have sensors on board recording information for NOAA, and we have the ability to tap into that information stream and send it to you. So if you have the observation station information turned on on your display graphics screen, then you'll get these symbols that will pop up. And on older Ray Marines, they were a magenta color. Uh, this screenshot was taken from a new Axiom, so they're showing up uh, a different color now. But these are the weather stations. And basically, you can click on any one of these stations, and what that's going to do is bring up this screen. <clears throat> so it's going to give you all the information coming off that buoy, and that's 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 live data coming right in off the buoy. There's actually a timestamp on it when the data came in because they they are on timers. Some of them broadcast like every 15 minutes, some of them every 20 minutes, what have you. Um, they don't broadcast continuously, but you're going to see, you're going to know how old that data is. So that's not somebody's guesstimate of what it's like out there. That's the actual conditions recorded from that buoy or from that seaman station. Now they won't all have all of these pieces of information. Different buoys have different sensors on board. So you might click on one and it'll only show you water temperature. You might click on another and it'll show you wind speed, water temperature, what have you. But basically any information that that sensor is sending out, we're picking it up and we're able to deliver it to you just by clicking on that buoy symbol. So Jeff, you want to talk right. about marine zones? Yeah, absolutely. So this is a not as well-known feature, but I think one of our most useful features for anyone who's been boating for a while, and I'm sure there's quite a few here in the audience, uh, we've all listened to those VHF weather uh, marine zone forecasts. And uh, if you're anything like me, they're very difficult to listen to, very garbled, and they continue uh, from one zone to the next. And I find it nearly impossible, and I'm almost always distracted when the marine zone comes around to my time, and uh, for whatever reason, I, I miss it. So um, this uh, removes that necessity and uh, simply outlines all the marine zones. So, Dan, if you put your cursor on the various zones and just kind of point these out, little black lines indicate the various zones. 
So in this particular case, just to, just to paint a picture and an example, the boat is somewhere in the Fort Lauderdale slash Miami area, probably closer to Miami. Um, if this particular boat was cruising around the Gulf Coast, the conditions that afternoon could certainly be different, different wind, different waves, uh, you know, things could pick up. Uh, and all you really need to do is click on the zone that you're going to or that you're interested in, and then it pulls up a full report for that particular zone. And if you look at this particular page, it shows it's really an, a great amount of information that includes the forecast, the wind, uh, waves, and, and, and this is specific to the zone that you chose. Um, CA, anything to add on zones that you may or may use at this point? It, it, not only for the safety, having that and having it in a one cut situation where you're not waiting on it like you do when you're listening to a, a, a standard radio on the boat, because we all have to have the handhelds on the boat. Um, you know exactly what's happening in real time. But what's nice is I like to use it for trip planning ahead of time because it's giving me the forecast um, for, the, for, the, for the day and sometimes the next day. So oftentimes I like to use it for uh, pre-trip fishing planning. Great. Any, anything else, Dan, or on to the next slide? I think we'll, we'll move on here. Um, and uh, there's some questions that have been coming in. Just let you know, we'll get to the questions here in a moment. A lot of good questions have been asked. I hope we can get to the, all of them. Um, I do uh, want to chat a little bit about uh, some more common questions that we do get asked. And the biggest one is how often does the weather update? Uh, different weather elements update at different rates. So the really critical information like lightning and storm, we update very frequently. Lightning up updates every two and a half minutes, radar about every five minutes. And then the, uh, the less crucial information uh, like wind and wave, that gets updated every 20 minutes. Now, sea surface temperature is one where there's a lot of confusion. So the bottom line is that the satellite that picks up sea surface temperature only crosses over a specific area every six hours. So that information is updated every six hours. But because we want you to have the most current information for your area, what we do is we take the data and resend it every 60 minutes. So if the satellite passed over at six in the morning and you turn your unit on at nine, we don't want you to have to wait until noon to get sea surface temps. So we broadcast whatever was available for your area every 60 minutes. So that's where the confusion comes in about when the updates actually occur. But right now, uh, every six hours is the most current information that uh, that we can that we can send the data or get the get the get the data for any specific area. Uh, next, I'd like to talk about a little bit who's getting this data for us. Uh, we partnered with the folks at the weather company. That's the the Weather Channel. Uh, TWC is their is their corporate name. Uh, we basically partnered with them, and they're they're creating a Sirius XM marine recipe for us. They're getting the uh, sea surface temperature information from the from the one satellite source. Uh, they're getting the NEXRAD radar storm data from another source. The lightning strike information comes from another. All that is 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 actually checked for accuracy and then uh, amalgamated and and put into a package which we beam to Sirius XM receivers. So here I like to talk a little bit about coverage area. We get a lot of questions about you know where it works, and the the Sirius XM satellites are in what they call a, a geostationary orbit. Um, that is a type of geosynchronous orbit, but different from the GPS constellation. Uh, the geostationary satellites are hovering over the equator, and they match the speed that the Earth is turning at. So basically, this our satellites are aimed at North America at all times, keeping track with North America as it spins. So our coverage is limited to North America, up to about 200, 150, 200 miles offshore, depending on where. You can see this light blue line here is our satellite footprint. That's where you're going to have coverage, and that applies to both our weather data and our music service. So uh, for the folks on the Atlantic side, the coverage extends all the way through the Bahamas, 
drops out just before that right there, just outside the blue is Turks and Caicos. And of course the Caribbean and Puerto Rico would be down in this neck of the woods and, and we don't have coverage down there. I do occasionally get a report, somebody's system is working down there. I can't guarantee service down there. It's, it, it, it's a fluke, occasionally some uh, signal, stray signal will reach down there. But this blue area is our coverage area. We do have coverage in the Sea of Cortez. I talk to cruisers who are coming down the coast and going around and back up into the Sea of Cortez. Right at Cabo San Lucas, you're going to lose signal for a little bit, and then when you get back over here, you're going to pick it up again. So that's the, uh, the coverage area. Jeff, anything to add? No, I think you got it, Dan. Thank you. All right. So, All right, so before we uh, break into questions, I just wanted to say, as I mentioned at the, at the beginning of this WebEx, that uh, we couldn't co possibly cover all of our features. Um, some of the features that were missing uh, that we didn't get to talk about uh, in any detail or even mention is um, our marine warnings feature. So NOAA issues warnings, whether that's a hurricane uh, or other type of weather warning that will pop up on your display, on your chart plotter um, for the weather. Uh, and we do not, uh, you know, we didn't get a chance to cover that, nor did we cover the fact that we forecast. Uh, we actually have forecasts out. Uh, Dan, and how far out of those forecasts? Uh, they can be out as far as 48 hours. As far as 48 hours, not to mention the fact that we also offer uh, isobars and barometric pressure um, as, as a feature as well. Did I miss anything in there, Dan? Uh, probably so, but I can't think of it at the moment. Okay. Uh, what, I, what I typically tell people is, is go to that display graphics screen and zoom out so you're looking at a large portion, say like the West Coast, and turn each of those features off and on one at a time and see the graphics that pop up on screen. And that will give you the, the, you know, the, the primer on, on what all is there for you. That's helpful. Um, Good. All right, so we've got a bunch of questions. Dan, I'll take a, a couple. Maybe you can take a couple. CA, if you want to chime in with a few. Um, the first question, uh, okay. general overview question, is um, can I get this information on my cell phone or my home laptop? Um, no. The way our weather receivers uh, work is they broadcast that information over your chart plotter. Um, so it's, it's not cell phone or, or laptop uh, available. And then the second question that I got, which was uh, – seems to be a fairly regular question. I know Dan and all our shows get this a bunch as well, is does your service uh, forecast fog? Uh, and the answer to that is uh, no as well. It's, it no, it could no, forecast no, uh, clouds, but not fog. Right. No, 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 no forecasting of it and no showing of where it actually is either. We haven't, uh, haven't added that information to the feed. Dan, a couple things that popped up that I saw. Can you address Canadian weather uh, and its, uh, you know, limitations or availability? Um, there was a question, too, about weather orientation. Is it north up? Uh, is it, you know, the direction of your boat? Uh, can, can you answer those questions? Yeah, yeah, a couple things there. First of all, um, regarding the, um, the weather information itself and what it can be displayed on charts, uh, the Ray Marine has, has uh, uh, two screens. There's a, a navigation type screen where it shows you your actual charts and the boat moving along. Uh, uh, traditionally, Ray Marine hasn't allowed you to overlay all of the weather information on what I'll call your chart or navigation screen. They would allow you to overlay the storm information, the next rad radar information, and the lightning, and that was it. If you wanted to see any of the other well, weather elements, you went to the actual weather screen and looked at it there. Now, with the new Axiom and moving forward, they're starting to change that and giving you more flexibility into what you can see and being able to put everything on one screen should you so, show desire. So that's something it's going to vary depending on your chart plotter. Um, now, the... Uh, um, regard, I'm sorry, Jeff, the next, uh, what was the next question? Um, uh, Canadian, uh, weather. Oh, Canadian, limitation. right, Canadian. So Canadian Marine Zones, um, has not been available on the, uh, older Ray Marine series. Uh, the, um, and actually the older Ray Marine units, the, you couldn't even subscribe in Canada, uh, due to some, some, uh, 
uh, rights issues up there, and, and uh, that's all changed and, and, and improving. We, we now, if you're a Canadian customer uh, with a, a newer uh, Raymarine uh, Sirius XM receiver, you will be able to subscribe in Canada. The Canadian Marine Zones are not available yet, but that is uh, in, the, in the hands of Raymarine's software development team. The, the data is on the feed, um, so uh, just need to get it fixed, and so it'll show up on the chart plotters, and that is um, on its way. I don't have a date yet when that's going to be, but I do know that they are working on it. Um, the sa another same thing applies to, to audio. The, some of the older plotters uh, could not do audio, um, and, and that's the other thing that they're working on, the, getting the audio available on, on the Raymarine chart plotters. Yep. Dan, a question that we seem to always get, which is, it took me a long time to learn as well, is the wind direction, uh, wave direction screen. So if you can go back up to that. So there's a couple questions here. And, and one, uh, one person on the call had a question about overlaying sea surface temps along with wind and wave data. Uh, and right. And the other, other was just about uh, reading barbs and how to find and access that information, where to find that. Right. So it, with sea surface temperature turned on, you can leave the wind information on and you can leave the wave direction information on. Uh, you just wouldn't be able to look at wave height or wave period because they show as, a, as color of the water represents what they are as does sea surface temperature. So you can see wind speed and direction and wave direction at the same time as sea surface temperature. And um, again, the wind barb, uh, the, um, the uh, manual does show this barb and give you indications on the direction. The screen we're looking at here, um, the wind is coming from the uh, northeast area and it is headed towards the southwest area. So that's the, this barb, this long shaft is what the, is the indicative of the direction. And the, uh, the speed indicators are towards where the wind is coming from. So Dan, Dan tell us again just quickly the uh, barb and how to read it for speed. What is that speed of the one you're looking at? And show us one that's smaller or greater than that. So here we have a wind barb indicating the speed is 10 knots. This section right here at the end is the indicator that tells us the speed. This direction, this is the wind direction, and this is the speed. This one is indicating 10 knots because there's one long bar. This one where it looks like the letter F, there's a long bar and a short bar, that would be 15 knots. Over here, we have one that shows 20 knots. There are two long bars. Okay, I think we covered a decent amount of questions. Sorry if we didn't get to yours. Dan, will you tell us just a little bit on the weather radar screenshot? I know we get this question an awful lot as well about the pixelation of the actual uh, weather radar as it comes across on the uh, Raymarine chart plotter. Right. Go up, if you don't mind. So here we're looking at, at, at the, uh, the image of the radar. And there, when you zoom in really close, these will start to look pixelated. They'll look like these little squares, even smaller than that right there. Basically, that's how the information is transmitted. This is the raw data. Um, one square equals roughly one kilometer. So that's the highest resolution that we can give you using only a three inch antenna. It doesn't look as good as you're gonna see on your phone or you're an iPad using the internet because the internet is a wide open pipe that can give you ultimate resolution, the highest bandwidth possible. Because we're beaming a signal from satellite wirelessly to your boat using an antenna that's about three inches in diameter, we have to decrease the resolution in order to give you all the data that we do. So it is, if you're zoomed in really close, it's going to look pixelated. But again, when you're looking at storms, you don't want to be zoomed in really close. You can see what's around you. What we're trying to show you is what's over the horizon, what you can't see. So you're going to be using that from a zoomed out perspective. <laughs> and, it's, and it's real time, guys. I mean, it, it is as it's happening. And lots of times, if you have sketchy cell phone service, 
the stuff you're looking at on your cell phone sometimes is 20, 30 minutes old. And that's just not good enough intel when you're trying to make a big decision on which way to go in, in stormy conditions when your, your head, you need to be clear thinking. And this, this gives you up to the minute how big it's growing and what direction it's moving. Right. And it's not, as I mentioned, it updates about every five minutes. Um, also, if you look right here on screen, uh, the Raymarine does give you a timestamp when it last downloaded the radar image. So you know how old that data is. Yeah, good, good point. I'm glad you so pointed that out, Dan. We had a question about, uh, about Nova Scotia. Uh, Nova Scotia uh, is in the coverage area. You will get uh, r the weather information in Nova Scotia. And uh, from a service perspective, it doesn't matter whether your account is in Canada or in the United States. The, the data feed is the data feed. You're, you're going to be getting, depending on what package you've subscribed to, um, you're going to be getting the same data. Uh, no matter where you are. If you're a subscriber, the data that you, you typically get, you're going to get that same data wherever you are within the coverage area. All right. Well, some fantastic questions. Thank you all. And if you did have a very specific question, we will give you a resource, uh, an email that you can reach out to uh, to have that answered as we move forward. But we got to keep rolling because we definitely still have some information to cover. So let's go to the second. Uh, here we go. So the current compatible receiver models, Raymarine has announced that they're launching their SR200 receiver. Its predecessor was the SR150. I assume a decent amount of people on this call have the SR150, which is no longer available for sale. Or there may be some dealers that have it available, but it is not actively being produced at this time. The SR200 receiver should be available, I, I, I think, in the next month. Uh, not exactly positive of Raymarine's development schedule, but it should be coming out soon. And the good news is, is that Raymarine has that at uh, a lesser price than it has previously um, been priced after our rebate, and we're offering a $100 rebate to any of our subscribers. After our rebate, that uh, new SR200 receiver will come in at $399. Uh, do keep in mind, whether you are a Raymarine subscriber or some other kind of subscriber, uh, weather subscriber, you are always eligible for the $100 rebate. This rebate lasts all the way through 2019, and you simply go to SiriusXM.com forward slash marine rebate. We don't own the hardware. This is our, our partner, electronics partners, Raymarine in this case, that owns the hardware and sells the hardware. But in partnership with Wave Marine, we are offering you a $100 Marine rebate. And uh, quite a few people do take advantage of these. Uh, Dan and I see these on a regular basis. And after you sign up for the service, we, you simply fill out the rebate form and we mail you a uh, $100 uh, Visa uh, card. Yeah, there was a little glitch with the rebate uh, service uh, back last year. Anybody who bought one last year and didn't get the rebate, uh, please reach out to us and we're, we'll take care of you. So next, of course, we we'll always like to talk a little bit about what made SiriusXM great, and that's SiriusXM radio. The uh, current Ray Marine receivers can do both music and weather all at the same time. Um, you can bring up the information even on a, on a screen. That's an actual screenshot that was taken uh, showing the, the music playing and, and looking at the weather. I had everything turned on um, all, at the, all at the same time. And uh, not only that, but when you are subscribed to Weather and you add the music package, you get a discount on the music service. So kind of nice there. Uh, talking about our services a little bit, the, there are two flavors of Weather available. There's a $30 a month package and a $55 a month package. Uh, we call them Marine Coastal, Marine Offshore. Um, although the, uh, the names are a little misleading. The, the packages have very little ge geographic limitations. If you are subscribed to Marine Coastal, you're going to be able to see storm information in anywhere in Sirius XM's coverage area. The only geographical limitation that the coastal package has is sea surface temperature. It stops 24 nautical miles from shore. So if you're an offshore fisherman, you're going to want the offshore package. If you're a cruiser and you don't care about sea surface temperature, 
the coastal package will probably do everything you need it to do. Um, the only thing that you might want if you're a cruiser is extended forecasts that we touched on. The coastal package will give you the current wind and wave conditions that we were looking at earlier on screen, the wind barbs and the wave and the wave height, wave period. It will give you that current information. It will also give you a snapshot of what that information is going to look like three hours from now. If you have the offshore package, it's going to give you the forecast up to two days out. That's the only difference between these two packages. So all the weather everywhere is with both of them. Just a little limitation on the forecasting and on the sea surface temperature. And then I mentioned the audio packages. There are uh, two most popular packages are the Sirius XM Select package and the Sirius XM All Access. The difference between these two is the All Access package includes a couple of extra music and audio channels like Howard Stern and NASCAR and a few of the other sports networks are included with the All Access package. The All Access package also not only allows you to listen to audio on your audio receiver on your through your weather device or what have you, but allows you a second internet subscription. So you could be on the boat listening to music and somebody else could be on their phone listening to music. It won't do the weather service on the phone, but you can certainly, through our SiriusXM music app, get all of our audio services on your phone. So those are the two most common packages. And the, uh, the normal price on select packages $15.99. If you have a weather subscription on your account, it drops to $10.99. I'm sorry, if you have an audio subscription, it drops to $10.99. All access starts out at $20 and drops to $15. And this subscription that for that music service, this is if you have a weather subscription on your account, any other audio subscription also qualifies for that discount. So if you have boat with weather service and music on the boat, you're paying the weather price and then you're paying the discounted rate for the music on the boat, you'll also get the discounted rate for any vehicle that's on that same SiriusXM account. Just keeping in mind that it needs to be on the same account. Dan, would you mind, before we move on to the slide, going back a couple slides to the SR200, I see there was a few questions, and I, I may have been a bit negligent in not pointing out some key things about the SR200, number one of which is the SR200 Raymarine is making this Avalium available on the Axiom series and the Axiom series only. Um, your previous, if you already have a 150 or previous uh, Raymarine, um, uh, like an SR150 or a previous Raymarine receiver model, uh, you do not need to upgrade unless you so desire. Um, the SR200 eventually will come out with new features. We're not at liberty to discuss those right now, but uh, stay tuned, I will say, for uh, late summer, early fall, some uh, new features to be launched um, that are specific to the SR200. But by all means, previous receiver models will still work with your, your Raymarine plotters. So hopefully those answers those questions. Thanks, Dan. Yep. A question about manuals online. Um, uh, Sirius XM does not offer a, a weather manual uh, because the weather looks a little different and is accessed a little differently on all the different brands of chart plotters. So we, we do rely on the, the plotter manufacturers like Raymarine and some of the other brands to, to produce a manual. Um, and again, if, if you do have it there, they don't have a manual for the SR200 yet, um, and they didn't actually have one for the SR150. Um, but uh, there are some older manuals that are available. If you, if you reach out to us via our contact information that we give you at the end of this seminar, um, we can certainly get you copies of the manual because realistically the, the symbols haven't changed. And if you're just trying to learn about the symbols and the colors and that type of information, we can certainly get you the reference material that you need. All right, I know there were some questions about trials, and yes, uh, SiriusXM in general offers trials. I know most of us who have had purchased new cars, automobiles, have gotten a, a trial on their vehicle. I certainly did, and uh, as part of SiriusXM Marine, we would like to offer any new customer a two-month trial. Um, and this is on our coastal package. I know Dan was reviewing the packages, coastal or offshore. Just to be specific, though, this Two-month trial applies to anyone who wants to sign up for the coastal package. 
Um, we, is, as you see, put a red box around this specific call-in number, and I thought it was important to mention that we do specifically have a marine and aviation call center. And uh, where some people uh, run into some frustration is by simply uh, logging in or, or looking at the SiriusXM.com website, site, not the specific marine or aviation websites, and then just calling the general 1-800 number and getting a customer service person who has no, no, no understanding of boats or, or planes at all. So please call this specific number and reference the two-month trial if you want to take advantage of this specific trial offer. All right, as far as getting activated and, and getting started, uh, first and foremost, uh, purchase and uh, confirm you have compatible hardware and then install your receiver. We do have quite a few customers that install the receiver them, themselves. Um, not a huge amount of effort, but different configurations require different amounts of effort. So um, we also have a decent amount of people who, uh, you know, hire electronics installers to install their equipment and make sure it's working properly. Then you choose your subscription package, as Dan mentioned, either coastal or offshore. And then you simply visit SiriusXM.com forward slash Marine Activate, or you can call to activate. And again, this call number is uh, a different number, but it still goes to our Marine Customer Care Center. Uh, very different than the regular SiriusXM.com or SiriusXM radio uh, call line. So make sure you call that number if you have a specific Marine-related question. Yeah, I will say that this is something that's new to the fact that you can go online. Um, you didn't used to be able to d make any changes to your weather subscription online. Um, that's now that's changed. That's new now. You can access your weather subscription. You can either get an, an activate a new unit, or you can make a change to your current subscription uh, online. So you don't necessarily have to talk to us if you don't want to talk to us. So getting back to uh, getting your system activated, I like to go over a, a few little helpful hints. Um, and the first one is, is in order to activate you, we need to know your, your what we call your ESN number or your radio ID. Um, they both mean kind of the same thing. Different manufacturers use different terms. Uh, Raymarine typically used to call it an ESN, and I think they've been changing their ways. You might now see it referred to as a radio ID in some information, but you can see here, this this is a screenshot taken from an Axiom. Uh, right here, they're calling it an ESN still. So this is in the uh, in the settings menu. If you're if you're looking at your Axiom, um, you can you can select uh, settings from the uh, from the menu from the settings menu. You can select weather, and that will bring up this screen, and it will give you your signal strength and your ESN number. Now, when you're going to call us to activate, we prefer that you get the ESN number from this screen, not from the sticker that's on the end and uh, from on the back of the receiver or the sticker that's on the box, because sometimes you know stuff happens out there. Boxes, labels get uh, switched and things like that. Um, when you when you use the ESN number from here, we know this is the actual receiver that's talking to your chart plotter, and because this ID is showing up here, it means it's correctly installed because the communications network link is working and the receiver is working to your MFD. So this is the best place to retrieve your ESN from. And also you can see right here your signal strength. If you call to activate and the boat's in the shed and we send signal out, it's not going to activate because it didn't hear the signal. So when you a signal is being sent to a receiver, you need to make sure you're getting at least two bars. I don't even know why they bother showing you one bar because if it's only one bar, it's not going to work. You need two or better, and they actually it only goes to three. So two or three is, is the signal strength you're going to need when you're calling to activate. Hey, Dan, if you would, I know there's a lot of people on this call that are already SiriusXM subscribers with their Raymarine plotter. Tell them about refreshing their signal if it's been dormant for a while, if you would. Sure. Um, the, the way the system works is if it's, if it's left without power for too long, say a couple of months, it can forget its subscription status. So we compensate for that by offering a refresh service. Um, and basically what that is, is there's an automated system you can go into 
and I'm, we have it on, a, on another page here, um, you can send a signal to your unit to basically remind it of what it's subscribed to to get it going again. Uh, you'll need to do this uh, when you're coming out of suspense in the springtime or if, if the boat is, is, is left without power for too long, it can, be, uh, it can tend to um, lose its subscription status. <clears throat> Uh, back to uh, activation tips. Um, I mentioned the uh, the signal strength. You want to make sure that uh, that everything is working. Another trick you can do is go to the audio side of the uh, of the unit, and if it's getting channel one, um, channel one is what we call our preview channel. It's broadcast all the time, uh, even if a receiver is not subscribed. If you can tune to channel one and get a speaker hooked up to it, even if it's a set of earbuds plugged in temporarily you'll be able to hear the guy on channel one saying, call Sirius XM now to subscribe to this wonderful Sirius XM service. So that's, that's audio channel one, another way to check and see if, you're, if your receiver is working. And then here's the information about the refresh signal. Um, again, there's two times a refresh signal is needed. Number one, brand new out of the box once you've installed it. You can call us the night before and set up your subscription. And when you go down to the boat the next morning, you're going to need to request a refresh signal. And it's very simple. You can take your ESN number and enter it at this website, and that will broadcast a signal for 20 minutes. So um, you've got a, a couple of minutes to, to request that signal. If your computer's not near your boat, uh, request that signal, get down to the boat to, to get this receiver turned on and have it pick up that signal. There's also even an automated phone system you can use. Um, you, can, you can dial 855-MY-REFRESH, and uh, if you've just got a, a, a one or two subscriptions on your account, it won't even ask you for the ESN. It'll just ask you for your phone number on your account. You can tell it your phone number, and it will send a refresh to all receivers on that account. Um, or if it does have a problem, if it's got, it can't figure out which one to, that it should be sending to, it'll say, hey, can you give me your ESN? You say your ESN number into the phone, and it'll ping it that way. So there's two really easy ways to, um, to get a signal out to um, your receiver. So, Jeff, back to you. Right, Dan. So uh, these are two ways to contact us. The Marine Customer Care line that I referenced previously goes directly to our Marine Support Center, and that's 1-800-869-5480. Or if you do have a specific technical question, feel free to email us, um, marine.support at SiriusXM.com. Right, so and we the, will, yeah, go ahead, Dan. I'm sorry, the, the email address, uh, this is the one I mentioned, if you have any questions about, uh, you'd like to get a weather manual, um, this is the, send us an email asking for that information and, and we will get you whatever technical information you need. Basically, the, the, the phone number is good for calling to activate or making a change to your subscription. If you have any technical questions, we ask you to email us. If you have any operational questions um, and you really want to talk to somebody, email us, give us your uh, phone number to call and, and, uh, and a good time to call and we'll have a... Uh, a technician who understands Ray Marine call you back and walk you through any button pushes and, and help you run any diagnostics that may, may need to be run um, to get a system going or answer any questions. All right, before we conclude, and I know we've surpassed our allotted time, our anticipated allotted time at least, um, we would like to answer some more questions. And just to be sensitive to everybody's time, if anybody wants to jump off, feel free. But before you do so, we are recording this session. We will send it out to everybody on this call and everybody who signed up. And uh, keep in mind, we will reach out to three of you with a $50 gift card to apply. Um, you'll also get a survey and follow up in the next week. And we ask that you give us some feedback. You know, what can we do differently? If there are additional educational sessions that you would like to attend, um, you know, what would you like to see us uh, include in those? So without further ado, let's get to a few more questions. Um, what's the next screen look like, Dan? 
it is, in fact, our questions screen. Uh, okay. Oh, by the way, before we forget, before we get to questions, there is one more webinar coming up. It's on June 3rd, and it's optimizing your fishing experience with SiriusXM weather. We're going to bring in uh, the host of the Florida Fishing uh, Insider Fishing Report, Rick Murphy, and he's uh, going to join us and talk specifically about how to use SiriusXM weather for locating fish and, and uh, optimizing your fishing experience. All right, so thank you everybody for joining. We will answer some questions for those of you that want to stay on the line. And um, Dan, I think we had one, let's see. Do I need two antennas for weather and music or can I split the one antenna? Dan, do you want to uh, answer that one? Yeah, you, with the Raymarine product, you can split the antenna. That's not true of all brands that are out there on the market. With, with Raymarine, it does use what I'll call a generic uh, Sirius XM antenna. We actually recommend the uh, Shakespeare SRA50. Uh, That's the, most, uh, the newest antenna on the market uh, from Shakespeare. It's just a little, typically, like I said, three-inch mushroom kind of shaped antenna. That's an SRA50. Um, and uh, Shakespeare also makes a splitter kit you can, you can get from them that is uh, specifically designed to uh, take the Sirius XM antenna and send it uh, to uh, two receivers. So if you have a, an independent music stereo on your boat that's already Sirius and then you've added uh, Raymarine weather at a later date, you, you only need one antenna. Another question uh, was about... Uh, SR150 versus SR200, uh, you do definitely do not need to change weather receivers. Uh, it, it, if you have an older Raymarine unit, um, all the A series, the E series, the lowercase E series, the C and G series, they all worked with the SR150. Uh, many of those even worked with the older units. There was an SR6. Um, going back even further in time, there's an SR100 and an SR50. All of those receivers still work with their plotters that they were made to be compatible with. Um, we're not discontinuing any of the services to any of the older plotters that are out there, or older receivers that are out there, I should say, at least not at this mm -hmm. time. There's no, no word of, any, of turning off any signals or anything like that. So if you have an older unit, you still want to add weather to it, um, email us the model number of your Raymarine plotter. We will tell you what weather receiver models will work with your plotter and then you can, you know, maybe you can go find one off eBay if it's an older discontinued product or something like that. And, and also the compatibility charts are on Raymarine's site and on our site, so you can check that out as well if you just want a quick uh, reference on a website. Dan, we got a question about uh, marine warnings, uh, several questions for areas that are 100 miles away, but keep them, um, the, what, people want to see if you can localize marine warnings as opposed to seeing all of them. You should be able to localize marine warnings. It's not in the Sirius XM weather settings per se. It's back in the main Raymarine navigational settings. But with these receivers, there is a way to change those settings and also turn them off and on. Um, so, and it, it's, it, it's hard to find. We get this one, we get this question quite a bit, um, but uh, it is possible. And wave information for the Great Lakes, Dan? Yes, wave information, uh, it is available on the Great Lakes, uh, all the wind and wave conditions. Um, that was not true of older plotters, um, but it's been changed for a long time. I think about 2012, we added uh, Great Lakes uh, uh, wind and wave information. So it is there now, and any SR-150 or SR-200 could, could give you wave information on the Great Lakes, as well as sea surface temperatures. Great. CA, is there anything here that we've missed or you want to interject in for the remaining uh, folks that are joining us? Well, for, for me, uh, it's an amazing tool that, that gives you up-to-date information that, that is a real value. It's, it's more than just safety. It's, it's understanding how your boat will perform a lot better uh, by using wind and tide to your advantage. Oftentimes, some of the best fishing spots that I have are when I can line up both current and the wind in the same direction because it creates uh, a, a feeding frenzy, if you will. So 
Um, there's a, there's an awful lot, and the reliability of the product has always been fantastic for me. I fish a lot of places that are out of the way, like the Delta, Louisiana, where there's very little cell service, and and also in Everglades National Park. Lots of these zones do not have any way or, um, to get a signal to me, and without serious XM weather, I, I just don't. I'd be lost. Awesome. Thank you, CA. I really appreciate you uh, joining us this evening. Is there any last questions? Let's see here. I'm just looking through my list. Dan, do you see any last questions that we have? Um, there was a question about d displaying information on avionics, and, and yes, uh, you can. I had a customer specifically, E127, you can. It does do the weather with the uh, SR150, for example, tied into it. It would display weather. You would be able to overlay the weather on your avionics charts. All right, so let's end at that. Thank you everyone for joining us. Stay tuned for the webinar post survey and for the awarding of the winners. Appreciate everybody's time this evening. Take care and let us know if you have questions. Thanks, Thanks so much. So.